During this short tutorial, we will be going over an example model available in the model risk help file. The name of the file is Modeling a Correlated Insurance Portfolio. This is an interesting model because uh, whereas it appears fairly simple, it's actually a fairly also sophisticated model and is of a lot of practical use not only in the insurance in industry but in any situation where one is trying to add up a random number of random variables and be able to correlate the resulting simulation. So in this particular model, I, what we have is an insurance company that has a portfolio of insurance policies, A, B, C, D, and E. For each policy, we have some data. We know how many policyholders there are. We know how many expected events or claims per year per policy there, there may be. We have also a mean value for the damage. Given that there is a claim, what is the mean value for the damage of the claim? We also have a standard deviation for the damage. And then each policy also happens to have a deductible and a limit. The deductible meaning any damage below the deductible is not paid for, and then any damage above the limit is not paid for either. That's like a max payout. So where we read the data from right to left, in this model we'll read the data from left to right. And so what we need to do first is build a model that can model the claim size for each of the claims for each distribution. What we've done here is we've used something called, we've used really, we've combined two functions within model risk. We've used a log normal distribution with the given mean and standard deviation to represent the basic shape of the probability distribution for each claim size. However, because there is a deductible and also a limit, we're also including those via the function called those deduct object. So I'm going to hold, go ahead and click the view function button and we can have a look at what that, what that appears. So this is the probability distribution function that we're looking at. And if you can notice the, the distribution itself is a VOS log normal 3.56 mean standard deviation 1.2. 82, which is what we have up here, then there's a deductible and a maximum. We've loaded that into each of these uh, policies. Then for each policy, we know if there's a claim, we can draw a sample from this distribution to represent the size of the claim. However, we also then now need to know how many claims. And so we've built here a Poisson distribution for each of the policies. Poisson distribution simply provides a number with the rate being the mean number of claims. And when you sample from a Poisson distribution, you get a discrete integer valued number. So this is the shape of, of the probability distribution function for that, probability mass function. And here's the cumulative distribution function. And you can see also loaded in the Vos Poisson. Now, the other thing we're interested in is correlating these. We've built a correlation via a copula. We can go ahead and have a look at it. This is a multivariate copula and so there's a number of different uh, correlations that must be built in. We can click on a white cell to view the correlation for each one. We're using here a Clayton copula with a parameter of 10. This is given information in this particular model. We might, if we had more detailed claims data, we might also be able to fit a Clayton copula or some other copula, perhaps a, an empirical copula to this data and use that rather than this parametric copula. And then what we do is we use a function within model risk called the aggregate. And an aggregate distribution is one that includes a, that essentially models a random number as represented by the Poisson distribution of random values and so it's a so it's essentially I can show you a picture what it's doing is it's taking a frequency distribution and a severity distribution and it's calculating what would that distribution look like if we were going to combine them together. 
gives a uh, shape something like this. So now when we have this in our model, we can take samples during a simulation from each of these different aggregate distributions representing each of the policies, add them up, and here is a cell representing our expected number of claims. Now since this is a stochastic risk analysis, we're going to run it multiple times. We can see what it will look like if we just recalculate the spreadsheet. We can see for each of the claims that we draw a new copula, which is being used as the U parameter within each aggregate distribution. What that does is tie all five of these distributions together, which cover all five of these policies, so that they, the output will represent the correlation as characterized in this copula. We add them up, and then we can simply run a run a simulation to see what would the actual total expected loss be from this portfolio of claims. In the interest of time, I ran a simulation before starting this video. We get a shape something like this for a 5,000 trial simulation, and we can quite easily read right off of this graph that there's an 80% probability of having a total number of claims in thousands of dollars between 400,000 and between 611,000. Now it looks very simple as depicted in this model, if, but without the very unique features within model risk, which are the aggregate distribution, copulas for correlation, objects, use distribution objects used to represent the distributions, and without the deduct calculation, it would be a much more complex model. In fact, it would be an almost um, impossible to build or very time consuming to build model and very slow to run model. So by using these four or five very unique features in model risk, we're able to make the model small, easy to read, very transparent, and then using the model risk simulation results window, we can of course save the results, send them to colleagues who can open them up either within model risk or possibly if, if they don't have model risk, they can go to our website and download a uh, model risk simulation viewer, small free app application in which they can also view these results, look at the statistics, build reports, and so on. Hope you found this interesting. If you'd like to learn more about this particular model, I'd encourage you to check out the model risk help file. You can uh, see an, the actual model and study some of the formulas and so on. You can also read a lot about the different topics, the subject ma material, the theory, the formulas, etc. that are behind this model. If you don't have a trial version of model risk, I'd encourage you to go to the VOS software website www.vosoftware.com. You can there get a trial version of model risk, or if you're only interested in looking at the help file, the help file is online and available for free, including uh, being able to download this particular model along with many other example models. I'd also encourage you to contact our sister company, who is also our main reseller, and that is Vos Consulting. You can contact Vos Consulting at these numbers or on the internet via www.vosconsulting.com.